Hello students, let us start our new session of chapter 13, Kinetic Theory. Now, let us understand specific heat capacity of gases. Here we are going to understand about monoatomic gases, diatomic gases and polyatomic gases and how their specific heat capacity can be justified as well for solids and water. So here for monoatomic gases consider three translation degree of freedom. Here for the single, uh, single translation degree of freedom having a total energy one half kBT. So by including three translation degree of freedom that is a three into one half kBT it means three by two kBT average energy of molecules is present. So total internal energy of a mole that is available as uh, average energy of a single molecule into total number of molecules present in a gas. So that would be 3 by 2 kBT into Na. That will give you 3 by 2 Rt. Now let us consider that specific heat capacity, molar specific heat capacity for constant volume that Cv that will give you du by dt. So differentiate the internal energy with respect to temperature and you will get that 3 by 2 Rt equation. So here for ideal gas that we know Cp minus Cv equal to R. Cv we have determined that is a molar specific heat capacity at constant volume. Now we want to determine molar specific heat at constant pressure. So for that Cp minus Cv equal to R. So Cp equal to R plus Cv and Cv is 3 by 2 Rt. By substituting those values we are having Cp equal to 5 by 2 Rt. So here let us take the ratio of Cp by Cv and you will get 5 by 3. Now let us understand diatomic gases the specific heat capacity of diatomic gases which is a rigid rotator having a 3 translation degree of freedom and 2 rotational degree of freedom. So the total energy we are having 5 into 1 half kBT that is a 5 by 2 kBT which is multiplied with the number of molecules and total internal energy we are having 5 by 2 kBT into Na that will give you 5 by 2 Rt. So here we are having Cv equal to 5 by 2 R. Cp minus Cv equal to R. So Cp equal to R plus Cv. Substitute the value of Cv and we will get Cp equal to 7 by 2 R. Take the ratio Cp by Cv that will give you 7 by 5. That is a rigid diatomic constant. So here if the diatomic uh, atomic uh, diatomic molecule is not rigid so that has the addition as vibrational mode and so total internal energy will be added again by the kbt and it will give you 5 by 2 kbt plus kbt into na will give you 7 by 2 rt so cv equal to 7 by 2 r cp equal to 9 by 2 r and gamma equal to 9 by 7. Now, for polyatomic gases having 3 translation and 3 rotational degree of freedom and uh, some amount of vibrational modes are there. Let us take that amount as an F. So, total internal kinetic energy that would be equal to 3 by 2 kBT for translation or uh, degree of freedom plus 3 by 2 kBT for rotational degree of freedom and F kBT for vibrational modes into Na. By that follow the same process and you will get Cv equal to 3 plus Fr, Cp equal to 4 plus Fr and gamma equal to 4 plus F by 3 plus F. So here Cp minus Cv equal to R is true for any ideal guess whether it is a monoatomic gas or diatomic gas or polyatomic gas. 
here one table is given which gives you the specific heat capacity of gases here the vibrational modes are avoided now the another table is given which gives you the specific heat capacity of the some gases in terms of cv cp and in gamma value let us understand its example a cylinder of fixed capacity 44.8 liters contains helium gas at standard temperature and pressure what is the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of gas in the cylinder by 15 degrees celsius so here we are having ideal gas equation pv equal to mu rt take the t uh, absolute temperature 273 kelvin pressure take a one atomic pressure and which occupies the volume 22.4 liters here this is a universal volume is available for molar volume so the cylinder which is having a two mole of helium which is a monoatomic so here the molar specific heat for constant volume cv equal to 3 by 2 r then cp minus cv equal to r based on that cp equal to 5 by 2 r here volume of the cylinder is fixed so here heat is required to determine the cv and heat required equal to number of moles into molar specific heat into rise in temperature so number of moles to molar specific heat that is a 1.5 r that is a 3 by 2 r into 15 that is a temperature rising amount that will give you 45 r now substitute the value of r the constant value and we will get that amount of heat 374 joule now let us understand heat, specific heat capacity of solid which is having n atoms each atom is vibrating by its mean position so here oscillations takes place in one dimension having the energy uh One half kBT into two that will give you the kBT amount of total energy. So that will the energy available in one dimension. Now solid having a three dimension, so its average energy is three kBT. Number of moles in solid, let us take as Avogadro number n a, and its total energy that is a three kBT into n a that will give you three R T. So here constant pressure. that would be equal to delta u plus p delta v here delta v change in the volume is negligible in the solid it remains constant in its shape and size so here delta v is neglected so delta q is nearly equal to delta u so c equal to delta q by delta t that will delta u by delta t it will give you 3 r Here, specific heat capacity for the solid is available at room temperature and atmospheric pressure for the various substances. Now, let us understand specific heat capacity of water. Here, each atom having the average energy three kBT, just like a solid, which is having a water molecule have three atoms, two as a hydrogen. That uh, it's a chemical. symbol is h2o so two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom is there so for one atom the total atom energy is 3 kbt so three atoms are there to form a single water molecule so 3 into 3 kbt into na will give you 9 rt and c equal to delta q by delta t that is a delta u by delta t will give you 9 r so here One calorie of water that will give you four point one hundred and seventy nine joules, and one mole of water that gives you eighteen grams. So heat capacity per mole it will give you seventy five joule per mole into Kelvin, which is nearly equal to nine R. So here specific heat of all the substance while we are giving. approaching as temperature tends to zero means temperature 
change in the temperature remains uh, zero, temperature remains constant, at that time degree of freedom gets frozen and it is ineffective at low temperature. So, according to that degree of classical physics, degree of freedom that remains unchanged at all the times. And the behavior of this specific heats at low temperature uh, shows inadequacy of classical physics and explained by quantum physics, quantum consideration. And this quantum mechanism gives the mini, uh, required minimum non-zero amount of energy before any degree of freedom comes into the picture. That's why the vibrational degree of freedom comes into the play only in some of the cases. Now let us understand another topic, mean free path. Here molecules are present in a gas having a larger speed like a sound, like a speed of sound. And these molecules in a gas which are uh, smaller in size, they are not bounded. Uh, they are not bounded in a structure so they undergo with the collision process and they cannot move straight continuously but their direction is continuously varying due to collision and path gets deflected. Here this gas molecules are available in a shape of sphere having the diameter d. And their average speed is available as a V. So, while they collide with the molecule, when this molecule is comes come across within a distance D between their centers, having its a volume pi D square V into delta T. If n number of molecules are available per volume, per unit volume, so that uh, number of molecules are available as n pi d square v delta t. It takes this number of molecules collision in the time duration delta p. So here rate of collision so here the rate of collision is available as uh, pi n pi d square v right which is divided by delta t delta t will be cancelled out so the time between the two successive collision then uh, on average that tau equal to 1 upon n pi v d square this average distance the average distance between these two successive collisions are known as mean free path l Velocity equal to distance per time. So, distance equal to velocity into time. Velocity into that uh, time is available between two successive collision tau we have determined. Let us substitute it and we able to get 1 upon n pi d square. Here all the molecules are moving and the collision rate is determined by its average relative velocity. So here we need to substitute V by the relative velocity Vr and here the L we will get 1 upon under root 2 n pi d square. Here L and tau uh, are available for the molecules having an average speed V that is 485 meter per second at standard temperature and 1 atmospheric pressure. So n equal to 0 0.02 into 10 raise to 23 divided by 22.4 into 10 raise to minus 3 that would be equal to 2.7 into 10 raise to 25 per meter cube and take the d equal to 2 into 10 raise to minus 10 meter so relax, uh, relaxation time between two collision tau equal to 6.1 into 10 raise to minus 10 second and the distance is available between two successive collision L equal to 2.9 into 10 raise to minus 7 meter. So here this mean path will, uh, will depends on inversely proportional to the number density and the size of molecules. So here the mean free path which is 100 times the interatomic distance 
so that is a 4 t n strong that is 4 into 10 raised to minus 9 meter which leads the gas behavior and gases cannot be confined without any closed container using this kinetic theory of gases the properties like viscosity heat conductivity and diffusion can be related with this microscopic parameters with molecule size now let us understand the example estimate the mean free path for a water molecule in water vapor at 373 kelvin use information from the first example and equation 13.14 from the above point here d for the water vapor which is same that for the air and the number density which is inversely proportional to the absolute temperature so n equal to 2.7 into 10 raised to 25 that would be into 273 temperature divided by 373 that will give you 2 into 10 raised to 25 per meter cube so mean free path is 4 into 10 raised to minus 7 meter clear here we are going to end the session with that we are going to end the chapter hope you understood the whole text, chapter thoroughly thank you